Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to lecture number 19 of the course Introduction to Computer and Programming. In this lecture, first of all, I will show you a program in which we will see some pointer arithmetic and we try to understand some of some concepts of pointer arithmetic. And then I will give you introduction of the sorting techniques. Sorting means that we are going to sort the value of the elements in the array. Array mein jo bhi elements hain, unko sort karne ke liye there are some sorting techniques. For example, aap ascending mein sort karna chahte hain ya descending mein sort karna chahte hain. And then we comes to passing an entire array to a function. In the previous lecture, we have seen that how we can pass individual element of an array to a function by value and by address. And now today we see how we can pass an entire array to a function. Then some pointers and array concepts where we discuss that basically array is a pointer to a group of element having same data type. Then I gave the introduction of I will give the introduction of 2D array, two dimension array ko dekhenge and we will write a simple program jis mein hum 2D array mein user se values input lenge aur usme kuch manipulation karenge. Let's see the outline of our previous lecture, what we have covered in our previous lecture. Uh, we have seen a program to calculate a percentage marks. And then we have seen how we can initialize a 1D array, bound checking of an array. Bound checking means that uh, you are not going to access the element of the array uh, who, who, that doesn't belongs to that array actually ke array ka jo size hai usse bahar ja ke element ko access na kiya jaye then passing array element to a function by value and by address individual element to a function and today we will see how we can pass entire array to a function and then some pointer arithmetic then printing value of array element using pointer so in, in, in this we have also seen a function this may we will call the function and we pass the base address of that array to that function and in that call function we have a pointer that pointer points to the first element of that array then we print that value and increment that pointer so that is very important concept today's lecture outline today's we see some pointer arithmetic uh, in a program and then so we sorting techniques and then I will show you one program of, uh, of one of the technique and I hope that you will can you will be able to write the program for other techniques as well then passing an entire array to a function arrays and pointer so that is very important concept and in this in this section we will see that array is actually a pointer a pointer that points to a group of element having same data type then two dimensional array until now we have seen one dimensional array that has only a single row now in two dimensional array we have rows and we have columns let's come to the pointer arithmetic program so this is a program that use some basics of the pointer arithmetic and uh, the first three statements are the uh, declaration statement where we are declaring and initializing some of the variables uh, the first statement is we are declaring an integer variable i and an integer type pointer x second statement we are declaring a variable j float type assigning a value to it 1.5 and a float type pointer static y and in a third statement we are declaring a character variable k assigning it a character constant c and declaring a character pointer static z so pointers regardless of the type of the pointer pointer always take four byte in memory okay so the type means that the memory they are pointing to store the integer type value if the pointer is is integer type and the memory the pointer is pointing to store floating type value if the pointer is float type and similarly for the character so when these three statements are executed memory will be allocated to to these three six variables three of them are ordinary variables and three of them are pointers so like this and then 
the next three statements so uh, as I sh told you before that for integer variable if we are declaring an integer variable let's say in this program we have integer variable i then four bytes of the memory will be allocated to that variable as you can see that these are the four bytes that will be allocated and 560 is the address of the first byte the first byte hai in four bytes may say 560 us byte ka address hai. next byte ka address kya hai 561 562 and 563 so these four bytes constitute a memory for an integer variable okay then we have three printf statements is may i j or k ki value print ho jayegi so the value of i is 3 value of j is 1.5 and value of k is c so these three values will be printed on the screen now the next three statements are the statement where you are initializing the pointer value the value contained by the pointer that is a memory address so in the first statement you are assigning the address of the memory that is allocated for the variable i and you can access that address using and operator so and means address of i you can read it address of i you can read it like address of i and you are assigning that address to a to x not static x to x so that will be stored over here in this place so when this statement is executed so 560 ad address is assigned to a pointer x now that pointer points to a memory location that is allocated for the variable i and whose address is 560 the next statement is y is equal to and j and j is address of j so address of j is 790 and here we are assigning that address to a pointer variable y so the y contains the value 790 and that is it is pointing to a memory location that is associated with the variable j in the next statement we have we are initializing a third pointer with the memory with the address of the memory that is associated with the variable k and that memory address is 320 so 320 address will be assigned to z and now z pointer points to the memory that is allocated or associated with the variable k now the next three statements are the printf statements so the original address in x is equal to so x key value ke static x is different static x means you are dereferencing a pointer and that means that you are accessing the value that is placed at the address that is hold by that pointer so your pointer jo has x pointer you can address hold ke 560 is the address that is hold by the pointer so static x means the value at 560 and the value at 560 is 3 so static x means 3 and x means 560 so here the original address in x is equal to 560 will be printed and the original address in y is equal to 790 and the original address in z is equal to 320 that will be printed on the screen so these are the three addresses 560 790 and 320 these are the addresses and pointers for pointers these are the value of the pointer just like we say we say integer variable i has ki value kya hai i ki value 3 hai so a pointer variable x has ki value kya has ki value a memory address hai, and that address is 560 so let's say we have a pointer x what is the value of pointer x the value of pointer x is 560 and we when we dereference that pointer that means when we when we try to access static x that is value at address 560 so this means that k560 address per kya value hai that value is 3 now the next three statements are so ye jo i j aur k ko memory allocate hui thi ये मेमोरी स्टैंड अलोन एलोकेट नहीं हुई थी इसके लेफ्ट राइट ऊपर नीचे भी मेमोरी लोकेशंस हैं राइट सो दिस इज व्हाट आई शो द नेक्स्ट मेमोरी लोकेशन स्टार्ट्स एट एड्रेस 564 व्हाई बिकॉज़ 561 560 61 62 63 दीस आर द फोर बाइट्स ठीक है 560 इज द एड्रेस ऑफ फर्स्ट बाइट 61 इज द एड्रेस ऑफ सेकंड बाइट 62 इज द एड्रेस ऑफ थर्ड बाइट एंड 60 uh, sorry 561 is the address of first byte 560 560 is the address of first byte 
561 is the address of second byte 562 is the address of third byte and 563 is the address of fourth byte of this whole memory jo dark blue mein aapko nazar aa right and then the next address starts at 564 same is the case here with the floating point variable because a floating point variable also takes four byte in memory but in case of character variables it's it the next address starts at 321 why because the character variable only occupies one byte in memory so it occupies one byte so that is the address of one byte 320 the next memory address is starts from 321 right now the next three statements are the pointer arithmetic that that is you are incrementing some value you are adding some constant value in the pointer and x plus plus means that you are adding one that is x is equal to x plus one so when this statement is executed now you will see over here the value of x will be incremented now before incrementing that value do you remember that I told you in the previous lecture that when you increment the value of the pointer you have to look at the type of the pointer if the pointer is of integer type it should point to the next integer value not the next byte so the next integer value is 4 byte away from the current position right so if the current position is 560 the next integer value lies at 564 right similarly so when that statement x plus st plus plus statement is executed the value of the pointer x will be changed and this will become 564 and it points to the next 4 byte right now when y plus plus is executed the value of this pointer is also changed it won't become 791 it won't become 792 it becomes 794 why because whenever you increment the value of the pointer it, this means that it points to the next value in the memory location and the next value is 4 byte away because the type of the pointer is in t is float so the next value is 9 794 and it points to this memory location so when you execute this next statement that is z plus plus then what happened over here will it become 324 no because the type of the pointer type of the z pointer is character and the character occupies only one byte so a character pointer points to a memory location where a character is stored where a character value is stored and character value occupies only one byte so when you increment that z pointer it means it should point to the next character value so the next character value will be at the next byte so its value become 321 that is the address of the next byte and it points to that memory location right so when you execute these three printf statement now the values of new address in x is 564 4 bytes added from the previous address 794 4 bytes added from the previous address and 321 only one byte will be added from the previous address right so let's let's go and see the program so this is the program this is the same program that I have shown you except we have the main function over here and the system pause uh, let me include this header file over here okay now let's first compile it and execute it now these are the value of the variables so these are the original addresses that is the address of i y x y and z uh, these are the value of pointer x y and pointer z that is the memory address of i this is the memory address of j and this is the memory address of k now when you increment it so you have the increment of four is performed so four byte can increment perform right this is the original address since it's an integer pointer where it points to a memory location where integer value is stored and integer value takes four byte so the next value will be after that four byte so your four byte ka difference here bhi aa or y ki value may be four byte ka difference aa because y is a floating type pointer and z ki value may only one byte ka difference aa why because z is a character type pointer right so you have to remember this thing okay so the things that needs to be remembered are that what is x and what is static x 
x is a memory address that is hold by the pointer that is 564 and static x is the value at address 564 so whatever value is over here that will be written if you use static x static x means you are dereferencing a pointer and whenever i say that dereferencing a pointer it means that value at the address that is hold by the pointer now let's see some sorting program uh, sorting sort what is sorting sorting means arranging element of array in ascending and descending order so ascending mean that the smallest element comes first and the largest element comes at the end and the descending mean the largest elements comes first and the smallest element at the end and all the in between elements must be ar arranged like for example this is an array so this array contains six elements so the size of the array is six and the, its index start from zero to five these are the values written in the red 24 34 12 44 56 and 17 and below are the addresses so 500 504 508 12 16 and 24 so the type of the array is most probably integer after arranging array elements in ascending order so the smallest element should come first and the largest at the end so this is the array arrangement in ascending order right and after arranging array elements in descending order this is the array arrangement in descending order the first the large element comes first and the smallest elements comes at the end position so these are the sorting techniques uh, sorry this is a sorting of an uh, array so we have different sorting techniques selection sort bubble sort and insertion sort we will i will i will i will i will tell you uh, or give you introduction of three of these sorting techniques but we will go only in the detail of the selection sort that will we will write a program we will see the program we will dry run that program i will sh i will tell you how the bubble sort work and how the insertion sort work but uh, uh, i won't show you the program for bubble sort or insertion sort this will be your kind of class assignment or home assignment or homework to write the program for the bubble sort and insertion sort right so let's see first the insertion selection sort so selection sort is a sorting technique you can sort the elements of the array or uh, any list using selection sort in ascending order or descending order it's 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 how you program so we are hearing here uh, sorting the elements of the array in ascending order that is the smallest element comes first and the largest element comes at the end so it contains uh, some number of iterations so this is the first iteration so uh, iteration uh, if you remember the loop uh, lecture lecture in which where we have uh, study loops I will I, I showed you what is an iteration 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 is a one complete circle execution of the loop right so this is the first iteration in the first iteration this is an array zeroth index one index second third and fourth so five elements array may have 44 33 55 22 and 11 so first you compare zeroth index element with the one th element so is me jo first iteration mein aap zeroth index wale element ko baki tamam element se compare karenge and you will perform swapping that means you interchange the values if the zeroth index value is greater than any of the indexes value right for example in the iteration one of the outer loop i would say so sabse pehle you will compare the element at zeroth index with the oneth index so the element in the oneth index is smallest so you have to swap these value that means you have to interchange these values so 33 comes up and 44 comes at the oneth index right then you compare again with 33 that is element at the zeroth index now it's 33 now not 44 because you perform the swapping and then you again compare if the 33 is less than is is greater than 55 or we can say 55 is greater than 33 if 55 is greater than 33 condition is false you won't perform swapping then in the next iteration so we have the outer iteration and inner iteration 1 inner iteration 2 inner iteration 3 inner iteration 4 
So this is the inner rotation three. Inner rotation three, you compare the zeroth index with the third index element. Second ke saath humne compare kar liya tha. There is no need for the swapping because the element at the or the value at the second index is larger than the value at the smallest index. So what we have to do, we have to take the smallest value at the zeroth index. So when we compare it with 22, so 22 is is smaller than 33 so we have to perform swapping and this swapping is performed 22 comes over here and 33 comes over here and then zeroth index element that is 22 is compared with fourth index element and the fourth index element is smaller than this swapping is performed that is 11 come at the zeroth index and 22 come at the fourth index now after the this is the this is the uh, execution of first iteration of the outer for loop. Is me jo subse mara ek chiz dekhe ke jo zeroth index pe item hai, element hai that is sorted now. That is the smallest element in that array. Chiki aap array me jitne marzi elements rahne jo marzi elements rahne iteration one ke baad zeroth index pe element apni jaga pe hoga. There is no need to compare that element further. So next iteration may the value of i will become 1. So you start comparing one element, element at index 1 with the element at index 2. If the index 2 element is larger than this element or we can say that if that element, index 1 element is larger than the index 2 element then we have to perform swapping. But index 2 element is smaller than the index, index 1 element is smaller than the index 2 element. So there is no need to perform swapping over here. So it's the same arrangement as we have in the one iteration number one of that outer iteration two and then we compare the one index element with the third index element now if the one index element is greater than third index element then the third index element should come up so we have to swap this value this is true this value is larger than this value so we have to perform swapping and after performing swapping 33 comes at the 1th index and 44 comes at the 3rd index and then in the 3rd sub iteration or the inner iteration so this is the outer loop iteration 1, 2 and usme inner loop 1, 2, 3, 4 the execute hua, inner loop 1, 2, 3 times execute hua. we will see in the dry run when we dry run that program we will see how this happens okay. now the index 1 element is compared with the index 4 element and if the index 1 element is greater than index 4 element then we have to perform swapping and that yes it is greater than so 22 comes at that position and 33 comes at the fourth index position and that will be input to the third iteration so third iteration we have where we have to last iteration may we start comparing with the one thing ele one index element now we start comparing with the second index element so second index element will be compared with the fourth index element and since it, this element second index element is larger than the third index element so the swapping will be performed so this these two elements are swapped now the second index element is compared with the fourth index element now second index element is greater than the fourth index element so this means that we have to swap so 33 comes over here and 44 comes over here so this will be the input to the last iteration and in the last iteration you compare with th third index element with the fourth index element right so when you swap these two values 44 comes over here and 33 comes over here now the array become 11 22 33 55 and 44 and in the fourth iteration you compare the third index element with the fourth index element if it is greater you swap these two and after swapping our array is sorted so this is the input to the program to the sorting function or to the sorting program and this is the output array where the elements are sorted in ascending order such that the smallest elements comes at the zeroth index and the largest element comes at the last index of that array now let's see the program uh, let's see one thing before uh, before going to the program that is after execution of the first iteration the element at the zeroth index is sorted that is it comes at its position now there is no need to change its position and after the iteration number two is is finished you see the element at the 
वन इंडेक्स सेकेंड एलिमेंट कम्स ऑन इट्स पोजिशन एंड आफ्टर द एक्सिक्यूशन ऑफ थर्ड आइट्रेशन द एलिमेंट एट द थर्ड इंडेक्स इज ऑर्गेनाइज एंड आफ्टर द एक्सिक्यूशन ऑफ फोर्थ फोर्थ आइट्रेशन द थर्ड इंडेक्स एलिमेंट इज ऑर्गेनाइज एंड वेन दीज जीरो वन टू थ्री दीज थ्री इंडेक्स एलिमेंट आर ऑर्गेनाइज द लास्ट एलिमेंट इज ऑटोमेटिकली ऑर्गेनाइज ऑर्गेनाइज मीन्स दैट इट कम्स इन इट्स पोजिशन ऑफ द असेंडिंग ऑर्डर कि वो असेंडिंग ऑर्डर में जिस तरह से उसने जिस पोजिशन पर आना है उसमें आ जाएगा नाउ लेट सी दी प्रोग्राम सो दिस इज अ प्रोग्राम वेर वी हैव द अरे ए साइज इज फाइव सो फाइव एलिमेंट्स ऑफ द अरे एज वी हैव सीन बिफोर एंड दिस इज द आउटर फॉर लूप दिस इज द इनर फॉर लूप एंड इन द इनर फॉर लूप यू आर कंपेयरिंग बेसिकली एंड वैन दिस वैल्यू इज ग्रेटर दैन दिस वैल्यू दैन यू परफॉर्म स्वैपिंग सो स्वैपिंग कैसे परफॉर्म करेंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी हैव अ वेरिएबल एक्स एंड वी हैव अ वेरिएबल वाई एंड द वैल्यू कंटेन बाई द एक्स इज टेन एंड वैल्यू कंटेन बाई द वाई इज ट्वेंटी then how we can interchange these two values swapping is interchanging the value such that the value of x will become 20 and the value of y will become 10 we can do so the simplest way is to use another variable so we have another variable temp integer variable temp so what we do is we we will write temp is equal to x we will copy the value of x in temp then we will copy the value of y in x and then we will copy the value of temp in y So, इस तरह से वैल्यूज इंटरचेंज होती हैं एंड दैट इज द सेम प्रोसेस वी हैव वी वी डेड फॉर द अरे एलिमेंट्स सो द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट वेन द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज एग्जीक्यूटेड सो ये जो प्रोग्राम है ये मेन से निकाल के लिया गया सो हेयर वी हैव अ मेन स्टार्टिंग ब्रैकेट ऑफ द मेन एंड द क्लोजिंग ब्रैकेट ऑफ द मेन ठीक है सो आई आई विल शो यू द प्रोग्राम आफ्टर द ड्राई रन सो दिस इज द अरे वी हैव नो फर्स्ट द वैल्यू ऑफ आई इज जीरो राइट So value of i is zero and the condition is i zero less than or equal to four. The condition is true. So it comes inside the loop. The next statement is the again the for loop where you are initializing j with so j is equal to i plus one. That means the value of j is one. Now you are checking the condition one is less than or equal to four. Condition is true. So this condition is true. Then you come to the if statement, and in the if statement you are comparing if a of i i is zero. If a of zero is greater than a of one, so a of zero is forty four and a of one is thirty three. So I have directly write over here forty four is greater than thirty three. This comparison will perform. The condition is true. Now you have to swap. You have to interchange the value of. For zeroth index element and the oneth index element, and how you do this? You use a temporary variable. You assign the zeroth index value to the temporary variable. Then the assign the oneth index value, the value at oneth index to the zeroth index, and then you copy that value of temp to the oneth index. So the array will become like this. Will look like this. So 33, 44. So these two values are swapped. इनकी वैल्यूज इंटरचेंज कर दी हैं इन दो एलिमेंट्स की एंड 55, 22, 11 आर सेम एज इट इज देन इफ की ब्रैकेट क्लोज होगी उसके बाद लूप लूप की ब्रैकेट क्लोज है इट गोज अप एंड चेक द कंडीशन सॉरी चेक इंक्रीमेंट द वैल्यू ऑफ जे सो वेन द वैल्यू ऑफ जे इज इंक्रीमेंटेड प्रीवियस वैल्यू इज वन नेक्स्ट वैल्यू इज टू इट अगेन चेक द कंडीशन ऑफ द लूप टू लेस देन और इक्वल टू फोर So two less than or equal to four condition is true. It comes inside. Execute this if statement. Now this if statement becomes if a of zero. So value of i is not changed during the execution of the inner loop. ये जो inner loop है हमारे पास जो जिसका counter j है इसमें i की value कहीं पर change नहीं हो रही. So a of zero that is now thirty three is greater than a of two. A of two is fifty five. So If 33 is greater than 55, condition is false. It comes again at the increment decrement part. So in, it increment the value of i. Now the value of i is will become three. The condition in the inner for loop is three less than or equal to four. The condition is true. So when this condition is true, it comes inside and execute this if statement. Check this if statement. So a of zero, i is still zero. Is greater than a of three, so 33 is greater than 22. So 
So 33 is greater than 22. This comparison is performed in the if statement and then the condition is true. Then we have to swap the value of 0th index with the 3rd index. So in the value of swap, 22 comes over here and 33 comes over there. So the array will become look like this. So 22, 44, 55 and 33. So these two values are swapped. Now the value of j is incremented. It becomes 4. The condition is 4 less than or equal to 4. Condition is true. So when the condition is true in the if statement it performs, we perform the comparison a of 0 is greater than a of j and a of j is a of 4, a of 4 is 11. So 22 is greater than 11. Condition is true. So when the condition is true, the array will look like this. So 11, 44, 55, 33, 22. That is the first iteration of the outer loop whose counter is i. And in the first iteration, the inner loop whose counter is j is executed 1, 2, 3 and 4 times. Then this is the array now. So our original array is changed from this to this and after the execution uh, now the value of j is incremented the condition is 5 less than or equal to 4 condition become false so the uh, one execution or one iteration of the outer loop is complete completed and when the one iteration of the outer loop is completed you see the first element in the array is sorted that comes in its position now this is the input to the second iteration so this is the same array, the output of the first iteration and the value of i is 1. Previously the value of i is 0, now the value of i is 1. The value of j is i plus 1, that is 1 plus 1 is 2. Now the condition is 2 less than or equal to 4, condition is true. In the if statement we will be performing the comparison if a of 1, a of 1 is 44 is greater than a of j, a of j is 2. So 44 is greater than 55, the condition is false won't execute the swapping statement because it comes inside the block of if and block of if will be executed when the condition in the if is true so if the condition is false so it comes again at the increment decrement part it increment the value of j the value of j will become 3 now right and then it checks the loop condition j less than or equal to 4 so 3 less than or equal to 4 condition is true it comes inside and execute this if statement the if statement is if a of 1 so value of i is 1 now is greater than a of 3 so a of 1 is 44 and a of 3 is 33 so 44 is greater than 33 the condition is true now we have to swap the value of 1th index and the 3rd index so when these two values are swapped, the array will look like this. So 33 and 44 comes over there. Rest of the elements are same as before. And then the value of j is incremented. It checks the loop condition. Inner loop condition. The condition is 4 less than or equal to 4. Condition is true. Then it executes the if statement. So if statement is a of 1 that is 33 is greater than a of 4 that is 22 so 33 is greater than 22 this condition will be executed and this condition is true so again it performs the swapping it swap the value of the one index with the value at fourth index so these two values are swapped now 33 come over there and 22 comes over here right so this is the end of the second iteration of the outer loop now the value of j become 5 5 less than or equal to 4 condition is false so it comes outside the for loop now the uh, it comes to the inner for loop, outer for loop or some value i value ko increment karega now in the, for the next iteration the value of i will become 2 so this is the second iteration and at the end of first iteration the first element is arranged at the end of second iteration the second element is arranged now the value of i is be become 2 2 less than or equal to 4 2 less than 4 condition is true then j is equal to 2 plus 1 that is 3 so j value of j is 3 now it compare start comparing in the if if a of 2 is greater than a of 3 so a of 2 is 55 is greater than 44 the condition is true so it swap the element at second index and third index and the array will become this look like this 
so 44 comes over here and 55 over here then it will compare then j value of j will be incremented that it becomes 4 now the comparison is a of 2 that is 44 is greater than a of 4 a of j is actually 4 so a of 4 is 33 and a of 2 is 44 so 44 is greater than 33 condition is true and it will swap the element at second index and the fourth index element and when these two elements are swapped the array will look like this now the value of j becomes 5 and the condition is false it comes outside the inner for loop and it increments the counter of the outer loop and the counter is and the value of i become 3 now at the end this is the third iteration of the outer loop so at the end of third iteration the third element in the array is sorted so we sort ho chuka element okay now the value of i is 3 comes the value of i is 3 check the condition 3 less than or equal to 4 condition is true come inside the for loop j is equal to 3 plus 1 that is 4 so value of j is 4 4 less than or equal to 4 condition is true it will compare the element at the third index and the element at the fourth index that is it compare the 55 with 44 55 is greater than 44 condition is true and it has to perform the swapping that is it swap it interchange the value at the third index and the value at fourth index so when interchange these value the array will become like will look like this so this is the end of the program value of j is incremented it becomes 5 condition become false it comes outside the loop and increment the outer loop counter the outer loop counter will become 4 4 less than 4 condition is false it comes outside the for loop now the array is sorted let's go and see the program now this is the program so let, let's make it a further, further complicated so the, our array is like look like like this so this this arrangement is called descending order arrangement where the uh, value uh, larger value is at the first position and the smallest value is at the end last position okay so this is the sorting program and this is the, the where we are printing the array so we are printing the print array okay? so let's compile and execute so the input is array is 55 44 33 22 11 and we are printing the value starting with 0th index goes to the 4th index and the array is 11 22 33 44 and 55 okay now let's see that what is the end what is the result of the each iteration of the outer loop so let me write over here so let's let's make an another variable so yahan par hum pata chal jayega ki first iteration ke baad so inner loop ki ek dafa execution ke baad array ki position kya hai that is the result of the first iteration or second iteration or third iteration and fourth iteration and then the final result right print f so this is the final result and final result is the result of the fourth iteration okay so last iteration ka result hai, that is the final result after ex execution Person D slash N I plus one. So let's let's declare that variable K K is another variable. Okay, because it is it is inside this this loop and I I is the uh, loop counter for the outer loop so we can I, if I use it over here then it will change the value of i and the program won't work correctly okay okay just compile it execute it okay let's make slash t So 
so after execution one this is the result the first element is at its position after execution two you see the second element is at its position and after execution three the third element is at position and after execution four fourth execution of uh, execution of uh, of the of the outer loop or the fourth iteration so the fourth element is at its position this is the iteration number one two three four and the jab ye charo elements apni bhi position par aa jayenge to fifth element automatically comes at its position and this is the final result that is the result of the uh, fourth iteration right now let's see the the other uh, sorting technique that is a bubble sort so in bubble sort we have again the iterations we we start comparing the zeroth index element with the oneth index element and if the oneth index element is smaller we will we will swap that value so this value is swap then compare the value of oneth index with the next index so here you are you are uh, you bubble up you bubble up the largest element and take it to the end of the ठीक है आप लार्जेस्ट एलिमेंट को पिक करते हैं और उसको एंड पे ले जाते हैं सो इफ फोर्टी फोर इज लार्जर इट कम्स ओवर हियर एंड इन द नेक्स्ट कंपेरिजन फोर्टी फोर एंड फिफ्टी फाइव विल बी कंपेयर फिफ्टी फाइव इज लार्जर सो इट वॉन्ट स्वैप दिस वैल्यू एंड देन इट कंपेयर फिफ्टी फाइव इट ट्वेंटी टू राइट एंड फिफ्टी फाइव इज लार्जर सो इट इट स्वैप दीज टू वैल्यूज फिफ्टी फाइव comes down and it compares 55 with 11 55 is larger so 55 again comes down and it comes over here so you see after the execution of first iteration of the outer loop in the bubble sort the largest element comes at the end of the array okay in the second iteration it start comparing the zeroth index value with the one and then if the element at zeroth index is larger it swap these two values and then one with second now this element is larger than the element at the second index so it 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 swap this these two values and the value become 22 and 44 now now it compares 44 with 11 so 11 is smaller so it takes that element to the that position second index and at the third index the value 44 will be copied so in those values ko swap kar dega that is at the end of second iteration this is the output and here you can see the second largest element comes at the second second last position in that array or start comparing zeroth index with the oneth index yes this element is larger it comes down then it compares that larger element with the second index element then again this oneth index element is larger it comes again down so at the end of this iteration you see the 33 is at the The third largest element is the third la as third last position. Then it compare the, the zeroth element with the oneth element, with the oneth index element, and the zeroth index element is larger than the oneth index element. Then it 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 swap these two elements, and the twenty two value at the zeroth index element comes at the oneth index element so at the end of the fourth iteration the fourth element comes at its position and when these four element comes at their position the fifth element is the, that is the first element that is the smallest element and that is already in its position so the largest element comes at the bottom after the execution of first iteration and the second largest element comes at the second last position after the second iteration and after the third iteration the third largest element comes at the third last place and after the execution of fourth iteration the fourth largest element comes at the fourth last position in the array so this is how bubble sort works now let's see the insertion sort so insertion sort may you start comparing oneth index element with the zeroth index and if this value is greater you swap these two values so since this value is already smaller so you won't swap this value and then you start with the second index you start compare it with the first index value Uh, here you can see that this value is smaller so we are arranging in the ascend, uh, in the ascending order where the smaller values goes up and the largest value goes down so 33 is smaller than 44 
So 33 will be go will be swapped. Uh, here we perform the swapping. So 33 will be go at the zeroth index position, and 44 will come at the oneth index position. That is like this. In the second iteration. अब यहाँ पर इन्होंने आइट्रेशन को कंप्लीट करके नहीं दिखाया हुआ राइट सो इन द सेकंड आइट्रेशन द सेकंड इंडेक्स एलिमेंट इज कंपेयर विद द जीरो इंडेक्स एलिमेंट ठीक है एंड इफ दैट एलिमेंट इज स्मॉलर इफ द ए ऑफ टू इज स्मॉलर देन ए ऑफ जीरो देन यू हैव टू परफॉर्म स्वैपिंग एंड हेयर दे इज नो नीड टू परफॉर्म स्वैपिंग बिकॉज ए ऑफ टू इज ग्रेटर देन ए ऑफ वन देन You start comparing with a of two with a of one, and a of one is also smaller. Then there is no swapping in the iteration two. Then in third iteration, you take the next element and start comparing it. Then this is twenty-two at the third iteration. Now the twenty-two is smaller than thirty-three, so you have to perform swapping then. So thirty-three comes down over here, and twenty-two goes over there. Right, and then 33 that will be that comes over here that will be compared with the 44. Then again, this 33 is smaller than 44, so 44 comes down and 33 goes up. Okay, and then 44 will be compared with this value 55, and the value is smaller, so 44 goes up and 55 goes down. So after the execution of third iteration, this will be the array. So 22, 33, 44, and 55. Now. You compare eleven, the last index element, fourth index with the zeroth index. So eleven is smaller; it goes up. Twenty-two goes down. Okay, and then you start comparing this value, whatever value is here, that is twenty-two. That you compare it with thirty-three. Then, so thirty-three is larger, so thirty-three goes down. Twenty-three goes up. Then the value is thirty-three. Thirty-three will be compared with forty-four, and then. 44 is larger so this value goes down right and 33 goes up over here so 44 is over here 55 is here then 44 is compared with 55 value 55 is larger then this value goes down and 44 goes up so the output is will be look like this 11 22 33 44 and 55 uh I haven't write or show you the program for the bubble sort and the insert insertion sort. So I assume that uh, this is your uh, homework. Take it as your homework and write the program for the bubble sort and insertion sort and check whether they work or not. Then we comes to the topic where we are passing an array to a function. In the previous lecture, I have shown you that how we can pass individual element of the array to a function. Where we are passing the individual um, uh, element by value and by address to that function, we have we have seen these two things. But when we are talking about the array, passing an array to a function, in this we are only allowed to pass the address of array to a function. So here, pass by value is not applicable. So C doesn't provide the provision to pass an array by. By value, uh, you can just pass an array to a function by address. That is the only mechanism, only way, right? So here you can see we have an array num whose size is six. So there are six elements in the array, and we are calling the display function and passing is it the address of the first element of that array. So first. The address of the first element of that array that is also called the base address of the array or the starting address of that array. So when this statement is executed, this memory will be allocated to the sixth element of the array, and let's assume the addresses are five hundred, five hundred four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and twenty. Now you know why there's a gap of four between the addresses. Okay. The next statement is the function call. So when this function is called, the statement will be executed and the memory will be allocated for this pointer j. So pointer j के लिए memory allocate हो जाएगी. And then which value will be copied will be copied will be passed to this function that is the address of num zero. So num zero is the, that is the zeroth index element. What is the address of this element? That is 500. So 500 will be passed to this pointer. So the value contained by the pointer that is the memory address. It is 500. Now this pointer points to this memory location. 
right now we have a variable i so execution of the loop you initialize the variable i with 0 check the condition i 0 less than or equal to 5 condition is true then you uh, then there's the output that is this printf statement so it print element a is equal to person d and in place of person d you are printing the value of static j now what is static j static j is static 500 and how you, we, we can read static 500 we read it value at address 500 so what is the value at address 500 that is 24 so this is the output element is equal to 24 next you are incrementing the value of j so value of j increment ho hai. since j is a pointer it's not an ordinary variable so how much increment will be perform uh, the increment of four byte will be performed four values will be performed because when you increment a pointer it means that it has to point to the next value of the same type same type mean this type ka pointer hai, us type ki value ka point karega so ye integer type ka pointer hai. so pehli ek integer value ko point kar raha tha. so next integer value four bytes away hogi from the current position so the value of this pointer becomes 504 and it points to the next element of that array then counter of the loop that is i is incremented it becomes one it check we check the condition one less than or equal to five this condition is true then we have again the printf statement element is equal to person d again we are printing the value of static j but this time j is 504 so the value at address 504 that is 34 this will be printed then j will be incremented j will become 508 now the value of i is incremented i become 2 2 less than or equal to 5 the condition is true so when this condition is true it execute the printf statement now this time it says value at address 508 now that value is 12 that will be printed j will be incremented its value become 512 it points to the fourth element of the array whose index is 3 and address is 512 so value of i is incremented condition of the loop will be check i 3 less than or equal to 5 condition is true here you can see the condition is true and then printf statement will be executed so the value at address 512 that will be printed on the screen and then j will be incremented so j increment jab hoga, the value become its value become 516 then loop counter will be incremented its value become 4 4 less than or equal to 5 condition is true then in the printf statement you are going to print the value at address 516 that is 56 that value will be printed now the value of j is incremented and that becomes 520 the loop counter becomes 5 the condition is 5 less than or equal to 5 condition is true because we have to execute the loop six times starting with 0 till the value of i is 5 so in the printf statement it prints value at address 520 that is value 17 will be printed on the screen and then j will be incremented the value of j will become now 524 it points to the next memory location right and then the value of i is incremented it becomes 6 the condition in the loop is i less than or equal to 5 that is 6 less than or equal to 5 condition become false it comes outside the loop and control will be transferred back to the place where you call this function and then this system pause statement will be executed so you see we have a display function we just pass the base address of the array and it prints all that element all the value of all the elements in that array Okay. So, we just use base address. Bataya. This is the base address of the array and it start printing the elements from that address. And in each iteration, it also increments the pointer value. Let's go and see the program. So, this is the program. We execute this program and now this is the output the value are 24 34 12 44 56 and 17 oh, perfect so here we have a function display function that is used to display the value of any array right 
so for example if I have another array integer a hmm, okay it will determine its size by itself I just assign the value 103 114 and 159 and then I call the function and again display and a so I have a display function now and I, I can pass that function any integer array right at the base address of any integer array and that function display that array 113 and 117 so now it prints the first array and then the second array right so we have six values 156 again so this is the first array 24 34 12 44 56 17 and this is second array 103 114 159 113 117 and 156 right so we have a function we just pass the base address of that array and it will print that array but what if we have an array that contains just three elements not the six element let's say a is an array that contains only three elements that is will that function be able to print that array no the output will not be the correct one because it will it will print these three value correctly because the loop is executed six times every time you call this function so this loop this function is perfect to print an array whose size is six but not for an array whose size is not equal to six so jo badi array hogi ya choti array hogi jiska size six se bada hai ya jiska size six se chota hai us case mein ye problem create karega what problem it should create if the size is smaller than six the loop iterates six times so it will print these three values and then the values of the other memory location and you, you will be surprised that what it what it is going to be printed so let's see if i if i double comment this thing if i comment out this thing the displaying of this first array and we just want to display this array whose name is a element r3 now what will happen let's see so you see it prints 103, 114, 159, 197916, 2379. So this is not the value of the array. I just assign these three values, but it prints these three values by itself. So what is the wrong with the function? So we have to improve the function. That is, we 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 must pass the second parameter to that function. That is the size. Now A is an array whose size is three. Num is an array whose size is 6. Now this this function should work fine but we have to change the definition as well. We have to have an, a variable that say size and we have to execute the loop size minus 1 times. Because size is 6 so loop will be executed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. Okay, so six times loop will be executed, and if the size is three, the loop will be executed zero, one, two. So three times loop will be executed, right? So we have to change the prototype of the function. Integer second parameter is also integer. First parameter is the memory address. So now if I call this function, let's compile it and execute the program. Now it prints just three values same function because I'm passing the size of the array and the that loop is executed only that that number of times three times only so if I comment this out and uncomment this thing now this is an array whose size is six now I'm passing the size of that array and this loop will be executed six times now starting from zero to five right so let's compile it and execute it so you see six times now we can say that we have a display function that is used to display any integer array. You have to tell two things to that function, the base address of the array and the size of the array. Size means total number of values or elements in that array, right? So you have to tell this thing to the function. So example functions are display integer static p integer size that we have just seen the other function you can write is sort ascending so this is the 
base address of the array right and this is the size of the array now you have to do the sorting in the array so aapne function ko base address bata diya now the function can access the original value of that array because it knows the address and it you also tell the size of that array so sort underscore ascending function will make that array whose base address is the first parameter in ascending order similarly we have a function that will make that will organize the elements of the array in descending order and the address of the array is in the first parameter the base address and the size is the second parameter so i hope you are able you should be able to write these three functions by yourself now and uh, consider it as your homework write these functions and if you find any difficulty you can email you can write me an email at my address that i have shown you in my first lecture write the program that you have written and write the problem and then write me the email i will definitely reply your email then we uh, array and pointer so that is the uh, real thing we can say uh, real food for for uh, for thinkers so this is an array num whose, whose name is num and the size of the array is 6 because we are initializing num array with six values at declare time so there is no need to specify the size this is optional so in such situation where you are initializing an array at declare time the size of the array becomes optional thing so whether if you want to mention it or if you won't want to want to mention it it's up to you but if you have to mention it you you should mention it 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 6 should become come over here right So this is an array in memory, right? So man mentioning the name of the array, we get its base address. Like that is, if we write num, then that is the address of the first element of that array. जहाँ से array शुरू हो रही है किस element से शुरू हो रही है first element से शुरू हो रही है. So that address is the base address of that array. So we can say and num of zero. Uh, that address is the base address of the array array num and that can also be refer as num so num is actually equal to num and num of 0 let me repeat it so num is actually equal to and num square bracket 0 and closing square bracket so the at base address we can write it and num of 0 we can write it just num so that is the base address by saying steric num we would be able to refer to the zeroth element of the array so steric num means steric means value at address num is 500 so we can read it value at address 500 so that value is 24 so steric num is equal to num square bracket 0 num square bracket 0 num and within square brackets you have a subscript that is 0 so that will give you value 24 and that is same as steric num so that is, right now i'm not saying and num of 0 i'm saying num of 0 num of 0 means num square bracket within the square bracket we have 0 right that is steric 500 that gives 24 so steric num and steric num plus 0 both refers to 24 clear so they they both are the same thing this is a pointer you are adding 0 to that pointer that means its value is 500 so the value at 500 that is 24 and the value at 500 is 24 as well now steric num plus 1 refer to the first element of that array so le let me go back so steric num plus 1 so num is 500 so you cannot change the value of num so when you say num plus 1 so here you are not changing the value of num it's not num plus plus that is num is equal to num plus 1 it is num plus 1 so num plus 1 mean that you are not going to change the value of num so so when you add 1 in 500 it means that it becomes 504 so and steric we have a steric with it steric within the bracket num plus 1 so steric 504 is value at address 504 that is the value of the first index that is 
so steric num plus 1 refer the first element of that array zeroth element first element or we can say the element at the first index this means that all the following notations are same so if we write num of i we are accessing the ith element of that array and if we write steric num plus i we are again accessing the value of ith index of that element and if we again write steric i plus num these are the same things let's go and see the program so this is the same program where we have a display function okay so if if i comment this out because we are not using now the display function and let me write print f person d person d person d slash n so i have to copy this thing because i am going to print that array So we are we are going to print the num array. So the loop start from zero and it goes till five. It executes six times. And now we can write num of i comma steric num plus i comma steric i plus num. So, ये तीनों सेम वैल्यूज प्रिंट करेंगे सो हर रो में सेम वैल्यू प्रिंट होगी सो दिस मीन्स दैट इफ यू राइट नम ऑफ आई नम विद इन स्केयर ब्रैकेट आई एंड इफ यू राइट स्टेरिक नम प्लस आई एंड इफ यू राइट स्टेरिक आई प्लस नम दे आर द सेम सो लेट्स कंपाइल दिस प्रोग्राम फर्स्ट उप्स वी गेट एर आई अनडिक्लेयर सो वी हैव टू डिक्लेयर आई ओवर हेयर but we have we have already declared i over here then why it give why it is giving this error now this declaration is within display function this has nothing to do with the main function but now we are using i within the main function so so we have to declare i within this function so this is the declaration of i variable now there's no error let's execute this program you see we have we are getting same values or like this so 24 24 24 so both these three refers to the same element right okay uh, let me write the memory addresses as well so first we print the memory addresses and then these values print f person d comma person d slash n So this is person D, comma. Now the memory address is uh, and num of i. That is what we already know. Now you can write the memory address as num plus i. Okay. So these both are the same memory address. because when you put static with this you are accessing the value at that address so when you when you uh when you write it when you write and num of i like num of i then this means that value at index i right so let's first compile this program okay and run it now you can see these are the both same addresses and the value of this address is this both same addresses both same same and same and same and these are the values now you know the two methods to access the address of that particular element and the value at that element we have these three methods now as you can see that array is actually the pointer to the group of element having the same data type so array is actually a pointer to a group of element having same data type but you are not able to change that value that pointer value so you cannot write num is equal to and i so let's see let's see if we write like this so it gives us error incompatible type in assignment because num is an array pointer right so it won't allow you to do this so if i write let's say 500 then what happens 
incompatible type so the compiler won't allow you to change the value of this pointer because this is now constant it points to the group of elements you can change these values but it is not allowed to change this pointer value right okay let's summarize our today's lecture in today's lecture uh, I have shown you a pointer arithmetic program and then we have seen some sorting techniques bubble sort selection sort insertion sort and we have a dry run the selection sort technique as when the program they cause called dry run Kia and we execute the actual program of selection sort and bubble sort and session sort ko humne just uski execution dekhi hai uska method dekha hai how this execution or sorting will be performed using the bubble sort or insertion sort technique and i i keep it to you to write these programs for the bubble sort and insertion sort and then we have seen how we can pass the entire array to a function and here we have seen that we cannot pass the entire array to a function by value we can just only pass an entire array to a function by address so and that is also the efficient way so just imagine that if you have an array of 100 elements in main function and you are passing that array to a display function by value then display function also must have an array of 100 elements and each element will be copied to that position so that will also take time and it will consume memory rather than this you just pass the base address of the array to the display function and then in display function it occupies only four byte for a pointer that contains the address and that pointer points to the array in the main function and then we have seen the array and pointer concept and uh, in this we have seen that array is actually a pointer and the name of the array is actually a pointer pointer to a memory location that has a group of element having same data type that's it for the today thank you for listening